Okay, now we have this objective function subject to these two restrictions here, and um, we can actually change the maximum for a minimum just by changing the sign of this uh, objective here. And um, also recall that we know that W is exactly this uh, sum here, right? So now, since we already know W, we just need to find B. And now this is where it comes the complementary slackness condition from Karsh Contager. Recall that so far we checked these three conditions and now uh, we are going to see the complementary slackness condition, which says like for all inequality constraints, either the KKT multipliers will be zero or the constraint will be at equality. This is also called tightness. And actually, in other words, this could be expressed as if the KKT multipliers are not zero, then the constraint must be at equality. Recall that from the original problem, this is the constraint because we are applying the KKT conditions for the primal to make sure that the dual will satisfy the primal solutions. So this constraint must be at equality means that we have this equation, right? That we are going to make sure that this constraint in particular is going to be at equality. This means that B is equal to this term here just by clearing up uh, from this equation. And now this tells that the KKT multipliers are not zero. It means that before, even though we were allowing alphas to be between zero and C, now we must make sure that they are not equal to zero or to see that they are in between, right? So these two things come from the complementary slackness condition and this allows us to find B, but now we just add this new restriction here. So at the end, putting together the stationarity condition with the complementary slackness, of course, plus the primal and dual feasibility of the constraints, we have this problem set up. The same objective function with these two restrictions, we found that these are the solutions that now we need to find the multipliers for the cases in where the alpha satisfy this restriction. Okay, so this is what is known as the dual SVM. So as a summary, this was the primal SVM and we, by applying the KKT conditions, we can end up in the dual form such that if we solve the dual problem, we get solutions that also are valid solutions for a primal problem. And again, why we like the dual formulation? Because two things. Recall that we never need explicitly W because every time we classify, we just need to multiply W transpose times X plus B to get the class. And this uh, is the same as this equation here. So this equation is not necessary. It is this equation, the one we need. So this again, end up in this situation in where we only need or we only depend on the training points through these dot products. And this is good because we can apply any kernel here and we can end up feeding a highly nonlinear model just by using uh, the kernel trick without the cost of calculating explicitly this phi transformation to the x as we saw in previous video.